All right, so say we have a slab of uh, linear dielectric material right here, okay? And it's, um, it's placed in a vacuum, um, and there's an electric field out there in the vacuum, except our, uh, the surface of our, of our slab of dielectric is not perpendicular to the electric field. So there's an angle, which I'm calling theta 1, uh, that um, say the electric field is is along this direction <coughs> and so is the displacement field by the way um, at, which is at this angle theta 1 from the normal to the um, to the dielectric slab all right the dielectric slab has a dielectric constant of K or Kappa whatever you want to call it um, um, We'll just call it kappa, why not? Um, all right, so the, the total permittivity is just this dielectric constant multiplied by the permittivity of free space. So that's the permittivity of the slab. And since it's in vacuum out here, uh, the permittivity out there is just the permittivity of free space. All right, so um, what we're going to look at are, are how um, the magnitudes and uh, these uh, the electric field and the displacement field um, how they depend on this on this angle and so on and so forth so um, first of all we need some good boundary conditions um, for one thing the the electric field parallel to the interface so maybe I'll, I'll draw this out here. So the things that are going to be equal, uh, we have E1, I'll, I'll call it parallel, I'll put a little parallel symbol up at the top. Uh, here we have an E2 parallel. Those are going to be equal. And the uh, perpendicular component of the displacement field so D1 perpendicular is going to be equal to D2 perpendicular. All right, and the direction these arrows are pointing doesn't really matter um, for us here. So, uh, so these are the things that are going to be equal. Otherwise, uh, uh, what we have to do is, is take into account the the dielectric constant of our material. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, set up a few things. All right, so there's a couple ways we can we can uh, write these. Um, we have E1 parallel equal to E2 parallel, and uh, the so using the displacement. Uh, using uh, uh, for this linear dielectric thing, we have this displacement vector uh, multiplied by the uh, permittivity. Uh, excuse me, the displacement vector is the electric field multiplied by the permittivity. So, um, what this what this uh, condition? Let me write this one down here. It's getting tangled up in all of my. Uh, different uh, terminology as usual. All right, so this D1 is equal to epsilon naught, because that's the permittivity out here where D1 is, uh, multiplied by E1, all right? And this is the perpendicular component. Okay, I think I have everything I need right here. All right, so I'm just writing this equation up here with the E's. Um, And so then the permittivity we're using for this one is just this kappa multiplied by epsilon naught. Okay, so we have a kappa epsilon naught and then E2 perpendicular. <coughs> okay. All right, so here's, uh, here are these boundary conditions in terms of the electric fields. And we could also um, use this to uh, write this in terms of the 
the displacement fields here. So if we um, so what this ends up basically we can divide out this permittivity of free space. All right, so we end up with just an E1 and an E2. So if I want to do the uh, perpendicular components, or excuse me, the parallel components of the displacement field. All right, up here, I had to uh, uh, multiply by kappa. So down here, I just need to divide by kappa. All right, I think I got this untangled. All right, so here's um, just our, our two boundary conditions, but expressed in different ways so that it's all in terms of E or all in terms of D. Okay. Whew. All right, so what does this mean for our, our, uh, our problem over here? Well, the, uh, if, our, if our electric fields and displacement fields are in, are in these directions, here on the outside and here on the inside of our dielectric, then the parallel components will be uh, the, the magnitude of the, the field, whichever one we're looking at, multiplied by the sine of this angle. All right, so here's the sine part, so that's the parallel, um, parallel to the interface. And then the perpendicular part component will be uh, related to the, or proportional to the cosine of this, of the, of the angle. All right, so um, the way we can write uh, these equations right here, uh, the parallel ones, so we, we just have an E1 sine of theta 1 equal to an E2 sine of theta 2. All right, so there's for our uh, parallel one. And also we have an E, let's see if I can leave enough space, E1 cosine of theta 1. All right, and then we just have this kappa here, the epsilon naughts divided out. Yeah, so this is equal to kappa epsilon 2 cosine of theta 2. All right, so likewise for the uh, displacement currents, uh, we get uh, the perpendicular components are just equal straight across. So d1 cosine theta 1 equal to d2 cosine theta 2 or uh, multiplying this kappa on both sides, we get a kappa d1, d1 sine theta 1 equal to d2 sine of theta 2. All right, so great. Um, so one thing, uh, if we want to look at uh, some magnitudes here, uh, so say we want to know the magnitude of the of this e2 and this d2, but all we know are the um, the angle that we're coming in at on here on the outside, and we know the strength of the field here on the outside. Well, um, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem for this. So um, um, just look at the magnitude of e2 real quick see that that is equal to, uh, it's going to be the square root of uh, the uh, parallel part squared plus the e2 squared, uh, the perpendicular part squared. It's a lot of little subscripts and things to keep track of. Um, but this is going to be equal to, uh, the parallel part was uh, we get an e2 squared uh, sine of theta 2 squared, all right, uh, plus the uh, cosine part. So e2 squared cosine squared sine theta 2. All right, I think I got all those little bits and pieces all, uh, I hope those are right. All right, so now we go to our equations right here. 
and we are able to now uh, plug in uh, the um, the E ones and the, all that stuff. So uh, E two sine squared. All right, this one uh, we can just change the twos to ones basically. As long as we change the right twos, right? So sine squared. Now it's a theta one. All right. And then the other one, we can do the same thing, except we have to remember this kappa here, so we divide by kappa. So 1 over kappa e1 squared cosine squared of theta 1. And again, all under a square root. All right, so uh, this e1 squared thing can factor out and then come out of the square root, so we just get e1. Um, we can call it the magnitude of E1 if we want. Um, we'll bring down this E2 magnitude so we we'll remember what we're talking about. And then we have the sine squared of theta 1 plus 1 over kappa uh, cosine squared of theta 1. And this is under our square root. All right, so we're going to do a similar thing for D. Basically the same. The only difference is going to be this kappa. So hey, let's uh, forget going through it all again. Let's um, let's just write it down. So we have a d2. All right. So again, we would go through the exact same thing, except now uh, the only thing different here the the e's become d's, of course, and then <coughs> now the kappa is on this side instead of the other side. Um, oh, and it's on the sine and not the cosine. So uh, d2, the magnitude of d2 is equal to the magnitude of d1. And then we have the kappa. Oh, and should this be a kappa squared? Um, I guess maybe it should, huh? OK, why not? OK, let's hope that's, yeah, OK. OK, yeah, everything else is squared. Why not this? OK, great. Kappa squared. Uh, sine squared theta 1 plus cosine squared theta 1 under a square root. OK, I think we're, I think we're good now. So, so these are the uh, magnitudes of the electric field and displacement field inside the dielectric in terms of the, the this uh, theta angle, theta 1, and in terms of the magnitudes of the fields here outside the dielectric. All right, so uh, we're going to look for a relationship between the dielectric constant and, um, and uh, this angle. So this is just another little bonus thing we, we find here. Um, if we, it, it doesn't matter which one we do, if we, um, divide, let me just, uh, maybe it doesn't matter, okay. If we divide these two equations right here, uh, then we get a tangent of theta one, all right equals, oh yeah, yeah, we're, we're good. So we're dividing these two, we get a one over kappa on this one, uh, tangent of theta two, all right? And we get the same equation from this one. So this time it's, uh, uh, the bottom one will go on top. And so we're dividing uh, this equation by this equation now. And uh, so for that one we get the, kappa here, uh, tangent theta 1 equals, and then divide these two with uh, this one on top, uh, tangent of theta 2. All right, so these are the same equation, just multiply both sides by kappa. So um, so here's a just a relationship between uh, these two angles based strictly on the value of our dielectric constant kappa. All right, so suppose um, we just have a, 
we're just going to make a sketch here of a specific case. Um, supposing that uh, the permittivity of this um, of this dielectric is equal to uh, three times the permittivity of, th of free space, and uh, theta one is equal to 30 degrees, or in other words, pi sixth. All right, so uh, just looking straight at this equation, we see that uh, kappa is the three. All right. Um, <coughs> Okay, so um, so just looking at the our equation here, we know um, so we're, we're plugging the three in for the kappa, and then a tangent of pi over sixth. Okay, all right. So this uh, tangent of pi sixth is square root of 3 over 3 multiplied by 3 just gives us a square root of 3 and then uh, that is equal to the tangent of theta 2 okay so what this tells us is that if we take the arc tangent or the inverse tangent of, uh, of the square root of 3 this will tell us that the uh, theta 2 is equal to pi thirds. All right, so two times the size of our theta 1. So maybe there's enough room up here to draw this. I'll do the best I can. So I'm drawing. That's probably a little bit too, too much of an angle for pi 6, but whatever. Um, and let's go ahead and... Um, well, yeah, we'll just uh, take it piece by piece. Okay, so I'm trying to draw a very large angle here because this angle here needs to be pi thirds. That looks a little bit more, more than pi thirds, but this was a little more than pi six. So hopefully at least this one's roughly twice uh, the size of this one. We can just use our imagination here. So um, what do we, uh, so we want to uh, sketch uh, looking at the magnitudes now of uh, these two um, fields inside the dielectric. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in our, uh, uh, what we get uh, with these with this angle of uh, pi sixth. Um, let's plug that into these two. So um, I think we're dropping our absolute value signs now. Um, so what we now have, okay, so, um, so sine of, uh, so theta one of pi six, so one half, so that squared is one fourth. Okay, and then k or kappa is uh, is three, so we get plus one ninth, so one over kappa squared, and then the cosine of pi six is square root of three over two, so that gives us a three over four when we when we square it. All right, so I'm seeing um, there's a, a if we put this, we get 1 12th plus 3 twelfths, which is 4 twelfths, which is 1 third. So we have 1 third, square root of 1 third, um, multiplied by E1. Okay. So for the D uh, magnitude here. <coughs> okay. In this case, we've got... Uh, the sine squared is going to be one fourth again, and this time kappa is on the top, so three squared is nine. So we have nine fourths plus uh, again uh, the cosine squared is uh, three fourths. 
Okay, so that gives us 12 fourths or uh, 3. So this is the square root of 3 multiplied by d1. Oops, this is a d2. Okay, so um, what we see here is that uh, this d2, so in inside the dielectric, the um, the displacement field magnitude is going to be longer by a factor of uh, square root of three, whereas the electric field is going to be shorter uh, by a factor of a square root of one third. So looking at this um, for the electric field so let's um, let's just take this um, as our the length of our electric field so out uh, um, so this length will represent the magnitude of our electric field out there and um, in the vacuum all right so for uh, for the electric field we want to have the parallel components equal so that means if we draw a line down and then we take this distance to the origin and mirror it over here, so roughly, I'm trying to get halfway again across the origin, and then we, we come down to this line, all right? Right here will be the length of our electric field compared to the length of the electric field out here, all right? so. You just look at the ratio of, of this length here to this length here. It'll be, it should be, you'd roughly get, uh, um, uh, this one is square root of one third uh, times this one. Uh, I looked up square root of one third, what was it? It was, um, let me check that again real quick. Uh, 0.577. All right, so looks, in the ballpark. Uh, if instead we are looking at the displacement field, now we want to have the perpendicular components equal, so we draw a line up here, we come down that same distance again, so roughly down here, and then we would, it's not going to fit on this paper obviously, we would draw this line out until uh, this line goes out to meet it. So let me just draw onto the next piece of paper here. Something like this. Again, if I drew the angles wrong roughly, so it's it's not gonna look very pretty. Um so yeah, something like that. That's these it's, it's not looking all that great. But um so if this instead were representing the magnitude of the displacement field out here in the vacuum, then the magnitude of the displacement field here in the insulator would actually be quite a bit longer uh, by uh, a factor of square root of three, which is 1.732. So uh, this, looks, this looks too long, but what can I do? Um, if I had drawn these angles more carefully, we'd get a, a better representation. But yeah, that's a. I think that gives a fairly good idea of how um, how uh, all these things are related with this um, with this angle here, with the electric field, the displacement field, and all these different things. So anyway, I think uh, uh, this sort of thing makes sense. And this, you know, if you zoom in really close on the boundary. So anytime you have, you know, the, the uh, a dielectric sphere and an external electric field, that sort of thing, um, this is sort of, if you zoom right in close, uh, this is the sort of thing you'd expect to see. So. Um, 